Live from Denver, Colorado, it's theCUBE. Covering Commvault Go 2019. Brought to you by Commvault. Welcome to theCUBE, Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. We are covering day one of Commvault Go 19 from Colorado. Stu and I are pleased to welcome to theCUBE one of Commvault's longtime customers from AstraZeneca. We have Scott Hunter, Global Infrastructure Services Director. Hey Scott. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So AstraZeneca is a name that probably a lot of folks know in the, in the biomedical pharmaceutical space, but for those that don't, give us an overview of AstraZeneca, what you guys are, what you do. So um, obviously we're a, we're a biopharmaceutical company uh, with a global presence. Um, we, we, we use three primary care um, and types of, of medicines that we sell throughout the world. Um, so everything from coronary care to, to oncology um, and also a massive di diabetes franchise as well as other core, core therapies that are used by our patients worldwide. All right, so Scott, maybe bring us inside. What does data mean to your organization? Um, it, it, it means lots, lots of things to AstraZeneca throughout our organization from how we go about um, finding that next molecule to uh, discover um, bleeding edge medicines for our, our patients all the way to how our um, salespeople and commercial use data to identify the right, the right patients for the, for the right care as well. And of course back office through IT, enabling functions like H HR and finance as well. So data for us is paramount to our business. All right, you've got global infrastructure services. Could you just lay out a little bit what that entails and how data fits into the picture, what's in your purview and what you have to work with other groups on? So, so my area looks after architecture, design and governance um, for cybersecurity and infrastructure services at AstraZeneca. So, um, so we, we look after everything either on premise within our own, our, our own data centers or in the public cloud as well. So, as you can imagine, data movement in, in our own realms and in that kind of environment is, is, is pivotal to the, the company being successful going forward. Well, and every time we, you know, you talk about data being the lifeblood of an organization or the new oil, when we're talking about you know, patient information and the information that can be used to find the next um, you know, cure for a particular disease, this, it's, it's, this is literally life and death data and the ability to have access to it, but also to make sure that it's protected and secure, yeah. table stakes, right? So talk to us about uh, when you came on board, you said around six years ago before we went live, Knowing how critical data is to AstraZeneca's business, what was the data strategy like a few years ago? Um, it was pretty convoluted six years ago when um, I first joined AstraZeneca. We were largely outsourced um, to, to various companies, so our data strategy, we basically didn't have one. Um, we didn't really have much of a strategy for looking after our data. We had five or six different backup products but um, the same amount of online data storage products as well. So over the last five, six years, we've, we've kind of streamlined that down to one, one key data storage provider, NetApp, and also for backup and restore combo. We do still have some um, legacy Veritas environments, but they are being decommissioned and moved over to Convo as we speak. From a like an IT initiative perspective, you said, you know, a few years ago, six years ago, we didn't have a data strategy. We, what was some of the, you know, from the top down, from the C-suite down, maybe from the board down saying, hey guys, we have to get our hands around it. I mean, this was before GDPR, but in terms of the opportunities that it provided the company, where did that initiative come from? And I know you're all in Commvault now, but you guys went a couple of different routes. Talk to us a little bit about yeah. that initiative and the initial directions to where you are now. Yes, yeah, so our, our um, ex-CIO, Dave Smalley, um, obviously had a, a vision for how the company was going to progress, certainly in his tenure, and a massive part of that was understanding where our data was, how it was used, um, and, and most importantly, how it was protected as well. And so that kind of drove the insourcing from 
likes of HCL, Cognizant Emphasis, into looking after our own environments, looking after our own uh, data approaches and strategies as well, so that organically the company could grow based on the best directions for using that data that, that we could meet from what we had already and through collaboration with other biopharmas as well. Again, just for the, the greater good of finding that, that next magical molecule to, to help our patients. Scott, uh, have you been to the Commvault Go shows before? Second time. Second time. Yeah. Great. Tell us a little bit about you know what brings you to the show. A lot of announcements here. Anything jump out so far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was interesting to see some of the new um, collaborations that are sorry purchases that Commvault will be making over the last little while. The Hedwig acquisition looks look, looks pretty exciting, and the Metallic um, venture that they're, they're doing for public SaaS as well. Looks, looks equally as exciting and pretty niche and, and, and the, the kind of environments that Convoc play on. So I think, think it's two, two very good moves. Yeah, so you're, you're leveraging public cloud. How, how does Convault fit yeah. into uh, that, that, your, your so we use We use Convault for, for um, backing up and restoring in our public cloud environments, whether it be in AWS. We're about to start launching in Azure as well with both Azure um, in the cloud, but Azure stack as well. And then we're in the process of bringing online uh, production environments and Google Cloud Platform as well. So having that one backup and restore strategy is pivotal, as well as enabling us to move our data using um, the visibility solutions you get with Commvault as well, which is obviously going to be very powerful as well. One of the things I noticed when I watched the video that Commvault has done with you, and they actually shared a quote from you during the keynote, actually before everyone walked in, is you said this constant evolution that Commvault is delivering was one of yeah. the things that, re that you really like from a business perspective. Commvault has done a lot of evolving in the last nine months with the new leadership, as Stu and you were talking about some of the new technology, some of the new announcements. From that, evolutionary perspective and what you guys like about it. What are you seeing in terms of them going forward? Are you seeing, hey, they're really listening, they're looking at use cases like ours, learning from it to, to not only make the technologies better, but to expand their portfolio? Yep. I mean, the, 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 for us, a lot of it's based on the constant evolution of the APIs that Convault use for accessing the various niche parts of their, their technology, whether it be backing up a VM to backing up Kubernetes containers and using that in a microservices environment as well to, to allow us to ensure that whatever outcomes we get from those kind of, if you like, serverless computing environments that understand what, what the output was so that we can either reuse it, destroy it, or use it in a different manner. So that, that for us, that, that's great because Obviously, for our own CI CD pipelines, they're all API driven, um, and to be able to use the Convault products in the same kind of fashion is, is, is good. So, Scott, do you keep up on the quarterly cadence that uh, Convault's doing, and is there anything uh, kind of either on the roadmap or things that you're asking for uh, that would make uh, your environment even better? Um, well, well, no, we, we kind of use the 90 day cadences for ourselves to ensure that our own strategies are you know, kept in check and we can take advantage of new nuances that are coming out, not only from Convoc, but for other parts of our, our data infrastructure, whether it be NetApp for our online storage or, or various, various other niche providers that, that, that we use for ensuring that our, our data is addressable and, and, and used in a, in, in a proper fashion. So I want to kind of get into a little bit of the, the use case. I know that you had a number of different competing backup solutions in place. Yeah. Did, did you start from a data strategy perspective like within one division or one part of the company to maybe pilot? Because you ended up with a whole bunch of different software solutions in there and yeah. now you've standardized on combo. Walk us through that process, those decisions and, and what you're getting by having this now single pane yeah. of glass. So, so some of the, if you like, the backup and restore sprawl was caused by individual parts of AZ being able to do their own thing, having their own IT budget. So you would have some parts of the business want to use uh, net backup from Veritas or the EMC products that were in, in play at the time. Um, when we outsourced between IBM and HCL, they chose HPDP for our primary data centers. Um, so that just added another another backup and restore product into the mix. So for us, it just became untenable when we started insourcing, you know, to build a, a support team, a support organization to look after that many technologies was pretty difficult, hence why we um, 
we, we decided to go for a, a one, one stop strategy. You said in the video that Combo had a, a pretty significantly higher success rate compared to some of the other solutions. Yeah. So that must have kind of made it a no-brainer. Yeah, um, so our, I think our backup for our critical set applications, it's 99.8% successful just now. Um, and that's, that, that's it's better what Convo get, get themselves. So uh, that, that, that's quite comforting. Um, and as I say, as, as more and more of our applications move over on the Convo platform then, We'll have a, a, a more rounded um, approach to not only backup success, but success in the restore um, side of things as well, as well as you know using the data analytics in a, in a more you know timely fashion again for for um, drug and manufacturing research. So I know that y you guys looked at, or sorry, spoke with a number of Commvault customers before you made this decision, and now here you are on the other side of the coin talking to a lot of Commvault customers. What advice would you give companies in any industry who in almost 2020 may not have a really robust data strategy? Yeah. What's your recommendations? Um, they should look at Commvault not just being a backup and restore um, solution. You know, the, the code base which is put together for Commvault is very powerful. Um, from the way that indexes the, the the information going through going through the product to how you can use that for things like DR, HA, and also um, migration of, of, of workloads to different data centers or different parts of a public cloud remit, you know, and the new the new vision that they have for data analytics is, is very powerful as well. Forget the name of the the tool right activate. now. Activate. That's the one, activate. So that, you know, and we've, we've started to use that ourselves in a big way. We've got a, a little data science team within my operation, which is mining that data, or starting to mine that data in a more efficient manner and feed that into our uh, enterprise data architecture um, so that they can take advantage of what we've already got within their own confines and mix that up with what they need to do for, for new discoveries. Well, Scott, thank you for joining Stu and me on theCUBE today, sharing with us what you're doing at AstraZeneca and looking forward to hearing the next molecule that discovers some great breakthrough. Yeah, no worries, thank you. Thanks All for right. inviting me. Cheers. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Convo Go 19.